Hello, my name is Kyle Bentley. I'm an application engineer with ProLint PLN. In this Snackbyte video, we're going to be looking at how to program parts without PMI. In previous videos, we've looked at how to program parts inside of the NXCMM application with PMI already authored on the model, using the link to PMI quickly and efficiently authoring all of those paths based on the PMI information. So let's go ahead here and look at a quick example of how we program parts without the PMI already authored on the model. So here inside of my part, you'll notice that I don't have any PMI or 3D annotations and dimensions out in space on my model here. So let's go ahead here and look at the inspection setup. So notice I already have my machine, my fixture, my different probes, tool rack and head already inserted in, and the part as well. So in here we already have our part alignment. We did the alignment assistant in this particular setup. Uh, we now have our part coordinate system aligned, so we are ready to start programming. So we don't have any PMI, so we can't use the link to PMI feature in this case. So you might come up to the inspection path and try to create different paths on different features or faces, if you will. So if I go ahead and select that, you're going to notice that it's going to give you a message that says the selected entity is not an inspection feature. So we have to build those inspection features before we can build those inspection paths. So let's go ahead and build those here. So those features are on the home tab underneath the insert group underneath the feature gallery. Notice we have many different options that we can use here. So we can do different ones such as planes, surfaces, cylinders. We can also do curves and arcs as well. So we could do scanning, you could do a point set. If you needed a tolerance such as a profile of a line, you could do that as well. So you could build those features here. So let's go ahead and build um, a few features. So the first one I'm going to do is a plane operation. So I want to inspect this top face, so I'm going to go ahead and select it. We could go ahead and give it a name here so we can better recognize it later um, for downstream applications for programming as well. So maybe I call this top plane. Okay, the next couple I'm going to do, maybe I do a surface operation. Notice if I come into plane and try to select that contoured surface, I'm not going to be able to select that there. So I'm going to go ahead and use the surface and select it. For this name, I'm going to leave it as surface 1. Okay, for the next one, I'm going to go ahead and select a couple curves, create a couple curve operations to show you that you can create a point set, or if you have such as the Revo head, you can use a scanning operation as well. So there's many different sub operations we can do. So I'm going to go ahead and come up to the curve and then select my curve that I want to inspect. Okay, so there's one curve. Now I'm going to go ahead and build another curve feature here so I can show you later downstream um, the different operations that we can do with that. Okay, so I have a couple curves, um, a surface, and a top plane in here as well. So notice those are building under the features group. So let's go ahead here and select a couple holes. Now notice if you use the plane operation, you're not going to be able to select those holes. So we have to use the cylinder feature. So I'll go ahead and select those and it will build the different cylinders. Okay, I'll go ahead and select those four holes. Now notice it builds those features underneath the feature group. So now I have my four different holes there. Notice I have a sphere over here, so I'll go ahead and build a sphere feature. And maybe I do the internal cut sphere as well over here. Okay, so notice I have many different features that I want to inspect. So I'm going to go ahead and generate that group. Okay, now we're ready to start building our inspection paths on those features. So I can go ahead and pre-select it and then run my inspection path, or I can select it from the list here. So if I go up to the inspection path command, I have to select the feature that I want to inspect on. So notice for downstream applications, if you have a naming convention, it's a little bit easier to find, such as surface one, your curve one, curve two, those have a count to them. Notice on mine, I named mine top plane, so I know which one to go to here. 
So I want to inspect the top plane. And then I'll go ahead and generate or add those operations in. And notice I don't have enough points because my method tells me that I'm always going to use 4 and 4. So I'm going to go ahead and specify those points now. Okay, so I'll go ahead and add that operation. All right, I'll do the same thing for the surface. This time, I'm going to go ahead and pre-select it instead of selecting it from a list. So I'm going to go ahead and select it here in the Inspection Navigator. Now notice it automatically selects it for me, and then I'll go ahead and add those operations. And then I'll go ahead and take the defaults for that one. Okay, we can do the same thing for the curves here. So notice I have a curve feature. I can come up to the inspection path and then generate those operations. Now notice we have many different types. This also goes for faces, not just curves. We can do a circular point set. You can do a point set. Um, you can also do scans if you're doing curve features. Okay, so we could do a scan if we were using such as the Revo head. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and leave it on the point set. Okay, I'll do the same thing for the next curve here. Okay, now notice I'm building those inspection features one at a time. And that might take quite a bit of time to build your inspection program. So we have a command inside of the NXCMM application to quickly build your inspection paths if you don't have PMI authored on the model. If you build your features, you can quickly select all of your different features and then run the multi-feature paths. Notice it then selects them in the current features. You can then select the tool if you want to. I'll go ahead and do that here and then accept those paths. Now notice as we built those, it built those inspection paths under the inspection paths group there. So notice as I selected all of those and quickly created them, it is now in the inspection paths group. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and start our machine simulation. So I already have my collision pair specified, so we're going to go ahead here and run the machine simulation. Remember you have to select the top level um, inspection program and then run your machine simulation here. So we'll go ahead here and run through it to check for collisions on our dry run. So notice it'll go through my part alignment to locate my PCS here. Okay, and then we are inspecting the top plane. Now notice it's inspecting the different uh, inspection paths first here in the order I created those. Okay, now notice I have a collision. We can go ahead and fix that. Okay, we have a couple different ones here. Okay, so we need to go ahead and fix those collisions. So just like before, we can go ahead and select the top level program, run our collision avoidance, and then optimize our inspection paths. And then it will give us a report on what, what it did. Okay, so it inserted some transition points and then deleted some points as well. So we'll go ahead here and run through the simulation again. And just to make sure it doesn't have any collisions. And then we could post it out if we wanted to here. So that is how we program our parts without PMI on the model. If you don't already have it, you could quickly use the multi-feature paths. Make sure you generate um, and create your features first and then create your inspection paths. And then also use the machine, simu machine simulation to generate your inspection programs. Thanks and have a great day.